Hello everyone, this is Life Questions and I'm your host Bill Harris. Life Questions is all about providing answers to your questions about life. And many of the questions that we address are sent in by you, our viewers, and we thank you for your valuable input. Our topics today are focusing on youth. We have a panel of ministers who have been praying over the answers that they have prepared and they will be giving us biblical perspectives on the issues of life. And I'd like you to meet this delightful panel. First off, we have Pastor Joshua. Was it Josh? I guess you go by Josh. Yes. Right? Yep. Okay. Josh Kennedy, who is Director of Student Ministries at Shawnee Alliance Church. Next is Marty Rind, Rind, Marty Rind, Youth Director or Youth Pastor, I should say, at Ross Cope Church of Christ. Laura Tubman is Next Generation Pastor at New Life Church International. And Brandon Green is a veteran here on Life Questions, former youth pastor and current lead pastor at Calvary Chapel of Praise, now known as Celebration Church. We welcome all of you being with us today. Thank you. Glad to be yes. here. Now we've got to focus um, all this month on youth and young, and young adults. I'd like to ask you what effect, if any, you think that social media is having on youth in the church today? There are all kinds of praises about social media and there are all kinds of criticisms about, about uh, the social media today. How is it impacting these young people and your ministries as a result? Who wants to take off on that first? Everybody's shaking their head just right. thinking. Yeah, the, I, can see the, I can see the wheels turning. <laughs> One of the criticisms from social media is um, the thing that was supposed to bring us together mm -hmm. is actually keeping us separated. So that, that's been one thing uh, with regards to technology. But uh, for me personally, what I'm finding is the trap that young people are finding in Snapchat and things of that nature with regards to comparison. Not feeling enough, and if you don't feel enough, um, it just continues to drive you in unhealthy ways. And so when they're on social media, uh, the temptation to compare, it, it just robs them of joy and strength to become the individual person that God designed them to be. They feel like they can never live up to this standard of what they see. And the fact is, we all put our best foot forward on social media. Mm -hmm. So it, we've taken 100 pictures just to get the right picture. So it's almost kind of like this facade that we need to talk about. But at the same time, this thing is a wonderful thing to bring us together, to yeah. create more space and opportunities to connect with students easier. How are you doing? You know, you can have a face-to-face -face call or, you know, video chat. And mm -hmm. those things are really helpful because a lot of students aren't talking dialogue this way. They're talking, you know, with yeah. double Texting, thumb text, yeah. which I cannot do. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right, who asked yeah, from Well, the iPhone was invented, brought about in 2007, and studies have shown how depression and anxiety have just sure. skyrocketed since then. And it's about what you talked about, Brandon, is that you know, we compare so easily on Facebook or Instagram, you know, Snapchat, whatever else these kids are getting on, and we are comparing a snapshot in one person's life, Absolutely. that perfect moment that you had mm -hmm. your hair right, the lighting right, the angle right, right. everything was perfect mm -hmm. to your ultimate, you know, complete reality, mm -hmm. you know, where, you know, it's, it's, it's called FOMO or fear of missing out. It's like you see that, that life is going so great for that person right. and then you feel left out. You feel like, mm -hmm. well, my life's not going that great. When in reality, that person is probably dealing with a lot more than what that picture, that post reveals. Yeah. And it just lets our kids down a lot because you know, their life isn't as grand as what they see others mm -hmm. having. Which leads to depression right. and anxiety. Yeah, it's a direct result. I think it also maybe just comes down to something deeper where it's not just a social media issue or an app issue, it's, it's an influence issue. Um, if you look at one of the top careers and one of the things that a lot of our students are aspiring to right now, it's to be an influencer. Mm -hmm. That's a big career right now. Right. And um, it's funny how some people aspire to be an influencer and then those that are influencers are like, man, this is a lot more power than I bargained for. Hmm. So I think when it comes down to it, we have to help students to filter through, okay, who am I allowing to influence me? And really look at, through a personal lens, okay, these are the influencers that I follow. 
these are the different things that are influencing me, whether it be an official influencer or a kid at school on, on a soccer team with them, whoever it may be. Um, it's that influence that begins to impact them personally, mm -hmm. whether that's emotionally, physically, spiritually. Um, so that's really where I've seen, okay, yes, it's social media, but it really does come down to that whole idea of influence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because there's the trap, like, you, you know, from what you were saying, like, so social media by itself isn't necessarily a bad thing. No. Right. You know, on its own. Not. But in that influencer mentality, it's like, okay, I have to have a whole bunch of likes. I have to have a lot of comments or else I'm not relevant. I'm not, you right. know, people mm -hmm. don't want to hear that. And so yep. it's not, a, you know, if, if we're able to hang up this idea that like, you know, who cares how many likes that you have? How, how, who cares how many people have commented on it, you know, mm -hmm. to show their appreciation or whatever, because that's where a lot of the depression, you know, mm -hmm. can fall mm -hmm. into is mm -hmm. that, well, nobody cares about what right. I have to say or something like that. Mm -hmm. Whereas if we're able to train to just be like, hey, you find something that you want to post up and just be happy about that is documenting something that was signif significant to you, sure. you know, in your life mm -hmm. and not worrying about how many people dive into, oh, well, I had to be able to like that as well. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Intrinsically, we all have a desire as humans mm -hmm. uh, to know, is my life matter? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, do what I have to say, does what I have to say, does it matter to you? And so it is very difficult because young people are so impressionable, you know, mm -hmm. and here they are posting and it's like, I only got, you know, 14 likes on this, hey, you know, and then they start to judge their significance. Right. And so that's why we really need as um, influencers in adult ministry and young adult ministry in youth ministry and in, even in children's ministry, let's, yeah. because our children are, are involved in social media as yeah. well. I yeah. mean, they're learning at a very early age. My daughter can take her toy phone and snap lots of pictures and she wants to post it in this <laughs> fantasy world. You, you know, we've got to give our, our kids a healthier self image and understanding of the creator or the manufacturer gets to say the significance of the creation. And that only can come from, you know, the word of God and just establishing as parents and as leaders and influencers in our children's lives, um, what they bring to the table, if you will. Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, there, there are people who take advantage of this and, and, and they, they try to capture the attention and the minds mm -hmm. of our young people. Sure. How do you, how do you deal with young people trying to um, train them to be on the watch out for these types of folks that are trying to uh, influence them in a very negative way. We could go into a whole host of things that are being done negatively, but uh, they need to be protected from these, right. these influences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do we deal with that? Everybody's kind of shaking their heads <laughs> again. Well, you, it, it, the, the protection is needed. You, you agree that protection is needed, right? Because yeah, the, the, the yeah. threat is there. Right. The threat is there. I, I think the, the ultimate mm. point here is grounding them in the Word of God. What, what yeah. does God's Word say? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. everybody wants to get people, how do I want to put this? People want to matter. Teens want to matter. Sure. Right. Therefore, they will go down the avenue where they think they will matter the most. Right. Where they're getting the attention. Mm -hmm. yeah, right, right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Where if we point them to, like, you know, God loves you for who you are. God wants you for who you are as you are to make you into you know, his image more so. You know, grounding them in that truth. My goal as a youth pastor is not to teach them theology. It's not to make them know all this information about what the Bible says. My goal is to make them desire to know that more, to point them to Jesus. Therefore, you know, so that when they figure out who they are in Christ, they'll be able to make those decisions on their own. Mm -hmm. You know, give them the wisdom to where they don't need me anymore, to where... You know, they are faced with all these influencers, all this culture to be able to make those decisions on their own. And I can trust them or their parents can trust them, whoever can trust them to make the right decision. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all going to be, a, we are all adults here. There was a point in my life when I'm sure a lot of people were wondering, am I ever going to be a responsible adult? Mm -hmm. uh, my parents trained me and teach, taught me enough to where I feel like I'm about as responsible an adult as anybody would ever hope me to be. And... You know, I feel like if we take the same approach to teens, then whatever influencers are trying to get their attention, whatever avenues are trying to go down, we can teach them to make the right decision. 
I want to push back just a little bit on something that you had mentioned with regards to our job is not to teach them theology. I, I feel like we should, but I think we need to do it in a creative way um, with regards to as an educator, and we're all educators here, mm -hmm. I find that our objective best, especially with young people, and I agree with everything that you said, but I want to frame it this way. I don't feel like I did a good job if I taught you what to think. But I think I did a really good job if I've taught you how to think yes. and how to empower you yeah. and how for you to search out the Word of God. That's where it goes down to the sense for especially parents, um, they can get trapped with trying to control their child. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just had a conversation with a parent about this. You know, what do I do about, uh, you know, um, secular music? If you try to control and mandate everything, you can run the risk of losing them. So my approach is not to try to control, but try to guide. Yeah. And I know that that's what your objective is too, as, yeah. as uh, student leaders. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I think that's a point that many parents don't get, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I can just see parents, I mean, hey, I'm a grandparent now, and I cringe when I, when I pull up with a traffic light and somebody's got their music going loud in the car <laughs> next to me, and I can hear the words of the song and, and what yeah. the message is. Yeah. Yeah. It makes me want to grab my grandchildren. But I think what you said is very redeeming. You're not trying to control the child per se in terms of do this and don't do that. But that's right. You, you want them to, particularly if they're away from you at a time they have to make a decision, they'll be armed with that mm -hmm. which is necessary to make the right decision. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's right. And that's not easy to do, is it? Mm -hmm. It's just not easy mm -hmm. to do. Well, I think we're going to take a break now, and uh, we're going to come back in a few moments for more great discussion here about your youth and how you can minister to your own youth right after this. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, we're back and we had some great discussion during the break and I want to see if we can't recreate this because there were some great things that all of you were saying. That it is important in dealing with young people to teach them not what to think but how to think and, and that sometimes young people because they reach a certain age that I feel like, you know, I, I can do this myself, if we're teaching them what to do, they rebel against that. Mm -hmm. maybe, they, mm -hmm. maybe they let that resistance down a little bit if we're teaching them how to think. How, how do we put this in proper perspective in making decisions between right and wrong? Um, I know for me, like what hit home was um, my mom, I, I have to give her major props because in raising me, um, she said that her goal was to raise a straight, a street wise Christian. Mm -hmm. So someone that's not sheltered from what's going on in the world mm -hmm. is aware of it, but has a biblical worldview and acts upon it in that way. Yeah. Um, so I think that's extremely important when, as um, parents, youth leaders, um, even just members of the church, when we're around students and teens, that should be our goal. Yeah. And the thing is, you know, I have students ask all the time, you know, oh, is, is this book okay to read? Is this show good to watch? Is this whatever? And the thing is, if I had Pastor Laura's list of green lights, I couldn't update it constantly enough. It's mm -hmm. just plain not going to happen that way. But the thing is, we have to equip our students to think in a way where they can truly discern, not just choose, yeah, but they're discerning. Right. Is this a life-giving thing or is this a life-taking thing? Mm -hmm. is, is this something that's going to encourage me or is this something that's going to discourage me? Um, you know, is this something that's gonna encourage me to dream or is this something that's gonna push me into a mindset of depression? So when it comes down to it, you can tell a student, do this, not that, but you have to get to the why. That's because right. that's going to equip them as far as making future Absolutely. decisions. Yeah, yeah. And I like your use of the word discern. I was mentioning during the break that it's a difference between learning and discerning because what you can learn in a book is one thing, but if it's something that's evil and you can't discern it, 
And discernment comes from the spirit within. Yeah. And Christians, uh, particularly young people who develop a relationship with Christ, have the same spirit of God that adults have. Amen. Yes. And discernment can come in and say, yeah. yes, that does sound good. Yeah. But there's an evil spirit behind it. Yeah. You discern that and you can make a proper decision then. Well, and the irony is, you know, this is all obviously geared towards students, but how many adults have not found this right. yes. yes. to be the case as well? Yeah. And that they're still, you know, trying to understand or maybe looking for this concept that what we're talking about, you know, so, yeah. I'm, I'm reminded of, I forget if it's 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians, I think it's chapter 11 where Paul's talking about uh, this sect in the church that is trying to eat all the right foods and, yes. and you know, stay kosher. That's right. Where, and Paul talks about, you know, Christ died so that we don't have to follow all of these rules. Mm -hmm, and and mm -hmm. he says, you know, everything may be permissible, but not right. everything is beneficial. That's right. And, and it's teaching mm -hmm. our students, you know, what is beneficial, what follows, you know, what follows the way of Jesus, you know, what glorifies him the most in how we live our lives so that they're not constantly coming. What TV show is right? What movie right. can we see? What music? You know, it's what is beneficial to our becoming more like Jesus. Mm -hmm. I think that's the ultimate. And with regards to what you were saying about your student is able to hear from the Holy Spirit. I like Bill Johnson. Uh, his quote is, uh, there is no junior Holy Spirit. And I think if I'm, if I'm listening as a parent, um, how do I make that practical? Don't teach them what to think, but how to think. It's just really by... No one here at this table is saying don't teach them the standards of the Word of God. Implement those. Mm -hmm. Show them. But also remember, some things are better caught than taught. And if you're not modeling those things, you know, that's not really helping you either. Mm -hmm. But maybe start by having discussions around the dinner table. Uh, maybe around the family altar, if you will, when you're when you're praying with your child and talking with them, but maybe stop and ask them the right kind of questions, mm -hmm. getting them to think. You know, I, I did collections um, in, in my former days, you know, of trying to get into ministry. And one thing we were always challenged with is everybody knows they need to do the right thing and pay their bill. But unless you stop and, and for a moment and think about it, if you can get someone to begin to rethink uh, and change uh, maybe a thought pattern, if you can um, ask them the right questions, which kind of leads them, it can inf it impact what they believe. And if you can impact what they believe, it can impact what they do. Yeah. So it really does start by asking the right type of questions. That's what I find most mm -hmm. helpful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the pressures that young people are under today, uh, vaping is one of the latest ones, of course. Mm -hmm all the flavors that they have to just draw you in. I think what you're saying is, is applicable there because if on the one hand they see their peers partaking of this mm -hmm. and they know their parents have taught them against this, uh, if they're being taught how to, th to think mm -hmm. properly as opposed to just what to think, mm -hmm. they can make the right, the right choice about vaping. That's right. Uh, or the right choice about uh, alcohol or the right, right. choice about yeah. marijuana. I mean, marijuana is legal now in 11 states. And that, that seems to send a message out sure. that with other states across the country that have legislation pending as well, it's going to be legalized across the country. Right. Well, it must be all right. right. Well, is it really? You know, right. when you're being taught how to think versus when you're being taught what to think uh, comes into play then. You can make a right decision. And you have to remember, as Christians, you know, this is a counterculture thing, yeah. you know. Yeah. Isn't it ever? Yeah. So, I mean, this, this kingdom is upside down compared to, the, you know, what we see uh, displayed in culture and media today. Mm -hmm. So it's important to remind, you know, impressionable minds, you know, that we have a different way of living. We yeah. have a different way yeah. of thinking and, and believing. And so it's important to really impress that to them, to remember that we are in this world, but we're not, not of, of this world. Mm -hmm and to really look at the long range consequences to sin mm -hmm. that if they don't have a good handle or understanding of that they may not understand that you know you have to you've got to pay up eventually yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. when i was in school uh, you want to go first just real quick something that i think we have to remember is we have students and children that they're going to test the boundaries they're going to they're going to make decisions that jobs. we that's, would not make exactly i have a toddler nature. i understand yeah, um nature. they that's, test the boundaries all the time um, but the thing is, there will come a point where they're going to have questions mm -hmm. and they're going to want to ask them. Yeah. 
and they need a safe place to come back and ask those questions right. without fear of judgment. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's huge. Important. And um, if, if you're a parent and you're wanting to address these issues that your students are facing, your children are facing, and they're the big issues right now, mm -hmm. um, I want you to pick up the book by Brian Dollar called Talk Now and Later. Yeah. And that's what he really is getting to is keep talking about these things. Mm -hmm. Begin talking about it before they face it, when they're tempted with yes. it, and even maybe after they dabble with it. Yeah. You know, keep that conversation going so that they have that safe place to come back to. Again, to have that biblical worldview instilled in them as well. Mm -hmm. One tip I, I like to leave with young people, and I, I did this when I was uh, doing youth work, is that when you, pe when you feed people, they let their guard down. This is why businessmen take folks to lunch all the time. Mm -hmm. Feed them, they let their guard down, and they're vulnerable. I required all my children, all five of my children, to be home for dinner. You know, this, this is a game or something like that that you're involved in. So right. I want you to be involved in your school, but I want everybody home for dinner because that was a time where when they ate, they let their guard down sure. as they were talking. And many times, they begin to tell on themselves. <laughs> it it worked. It worked. But yeah. it's it, it's it's a nice way of creating an atmosphere where they can talk, as you said, and not feel that they're going to be judged mm -hmm. for some of the things they're going to say. And it gives the parent an idea of what the child is thinking, what's in the child's heart, because they've let their guard down. Sure. Mm -hmm. It's very good. And I really liked what you you had mentioned about um, is the culture in your home healthy enough? for me to make mistakes without you jumping down my throat or that, um, you know, as a parent, can I be trusted with the difficult questions and just creating that space in your home where your child feels safe enough with their parent and not so judged or, you know, the parent coming down so hard on them if they don't have the right answers or if they are struggling with certain thoughts and, and, and concepts because, you know, they're, they're evolving just like as parents were evolving as well. but to continue to create, I firmly believe in Dr. Dobson's thought that rules without relationship lead to rebellion. Mm -hmm. Make all the standards you want, all mm -hmm. the rules that you want. If your child cannot relate to you on a personal level as their parent and they right. feel safe, they will rebel all day long. Well, you hit, you hit the nail on the head with that one. Of course, as you said, Dr. That's Dr. Dobson. Uh -huh. I didn't write that one, but no, but uh, <laughs> it's it's so true. I mean, at my, I I start having flashbacks yep. to when my kids were small. That same thing, because that was, I think, uh, one of the mistakes I made in some cases where I wasn't getting close enough to them to really be able to lay this rule on them sure. without uh, without developing that relationship first before doing that. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and it leads to rebellion. It, yeah. it does. and then I think back to my own life. What happened to my own life? Isn't that the truth? Right. Yeah. 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 I, I do my best to not like yell at students or get mad at students. I don't have any children of my own uh, yet anyways. But you know, one thing that I, I try to follow is you know, there's always going to be a, a, a catalyst that, that could potentially get you angry. You know, something that will make you upset, whether it's a, a student or a kid doing something that they weren't supposed to do, or maybe that you feel like they weren't ready to do. And then you're going to, you know, every instinct is telling you get mad teach them the right answer when in reality you know what what if the correct response is to you know take a step back let think through what they did why did they do that mm -hmm. because you know nothing happened you know people don't do things for no reason right where you know maybe they're trying to take a step up in responsibility maybe they're ready for more than what you're giving them to where they break a rule because they don't think that that rule is applicable to them anymore at that mm -hmm. point in their life you know what if that means that you need to evolve as a parent or as a leader in youth ministry, give them more experience or more responsibility rather. I think what you're talking about, that relationship where you can help guide them and, and keep yourself from getting upset or angry or being demanding, but also from being a best friend is very difficult to navigate. Mm -hmm. Finding that, that sweet spot between mm -hmm. being um, you know, the disciplinarian and the best friend. Yeah. If, if you have a parent who is only the disciplinarian, like you were saying, mm -hmm. it, it's going to cause rebellion. But if you are only the best that's friend, that's enabling. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. um, so that's where we have to find that middle ground. That's yeah. a tough thing. And, and that's very that's difficult. And thing. again, that takes a lot of <laughs> prayer and discernment. Yeah. And, you know, really our job as parents, we are stewards of our kids. Mm -hmm. Yes. They, yes. They're not ours. We are stewards. And that's where we say, okay, God, you've given me these kids. 
and I'm raising them for your glory right. and for your kingdom. Help me. Yeah. <laughs> Guide me yeah. as I'm guiding them. Yeah. And for every parent that has felt like a failure, you're in good company because God has experienced this. Yeah. Think about the rebellion that happened in the garden. Yeah. Think about the rebellion of Jesus' own disciple who carried the money bag. I mean, you don't give your checkbook or debit card just to anybody. So whenever you create um, relationship, there is that aspect of vulnerability and you open your heart to your child could potentially make decisions which will break your heart. But remember that as she shared, you know, we are stewards of our children. And ultimately, God knows what we're going through. We can draw from the strength of God. God is a refuge. He is a strength. The spirit of revelation and wisdom is available to us as parents and as leaders uh, in trying to reach this generation. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember coming out of the church uh, one day uh, with my five children. They were little toddlers at the time. And an, and an old lady, she probably didn't even have a high school diploma, mm -hmm. but she had the wisdom of God in her heart. Yeah. She looked down at my five children and she looked up at me and she said, son, she said, keep them on your lap as long as you can, because mm -hmm. when they get on your heart, they really get heavy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and and I, I never yeah. forgot that. Wow. And in essence, what she was talking about is what you're talking about. You got to have that relationship with them. You put them on your lap and you talk to them. I came to Christ as a teenager because my grandmother taught me about Jesus on her knee when I was five years old. Amen. And I got up in my early teens, I started doing my own thing and she says, I'm, I'm praying for you. That's right. And her prayers reached out and they arrested me in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it, it, it is the relationship thing. And I love what you talked about, the fact that you can't be the total disciplinarian or the total uh, best, uh, friend. best friend. But there's somewhere in the middle, and God help us all to find that place in that's the middle, right. that proper balance. Yes. That's right. Well, because as student pastors, that's what, in a way, we're very much, you know, like an extension of parents. Um, exactly. Yeah. And that's what I love partnering with parents so yes. frequently yes. because, you know, I think that in tandem together, we've got this great, you know, like as is I have my material that generally runs month to month, you know, that we've got like a topic that we're going to run with. It's so great when I get to work with a parent to say, hey, these are the things that we're going to be covering yeah, in, yeah, yeah. you know, while mm -hmm. they're under my care. Right. And then you can piggyback off this throughout sure. the week yeah. so that it's not just once a week that they're getting this information. So we get to find ourselves as being, you know, a little bit of the friend and a little bit of the parent, uh, right. you know, and just right. kind of mm -hmm. finding that that balance between it all. And so. Oh, I thought you were going to add. To, 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 <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I was just listening. I, I was just like, okay, I, let me just say this one about, about 30 seconds left. I just want to encourage your audience, wh whatever church you go to, make it your business as a parent to partner with the youth department Please. of your church. Yes. They are just waiting for you. They, they, they need you. And, they, and in many cases, probably they're reaching out to you. You may not realize it or not. But if there's a great partnership between you as parents and the youth department at your church, that's a win-win situation. Yes. Yes. It is. And the biggest Absolutely. winners of all are those children yes. that are at stake. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being with us. And by the way, if you enjoyed this discussion, stick around next week. They'll be back. We'll have more discussion on this. Until then, I'm Bill Harris. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We are able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com. Mm -hmm.